All right, so besides that clip, I was able to get some preliminary test numbers for my homemade electric ducted fan. I've played around a lot with FDM printed EDFs over the past several months. While I've only been able to achieve a little under half of the thrust of a similar sized OEM EDF, this platform has really allowed me to play around with some pretty wacky stuff, such as this ultra long thrust tube, a variable length rack and pinion exhaust, or quote unquote bladeless versions. My latest experiment in this fan world is this contra rotating version, which uses bevel gears and inline axles to get two fans spinning in opposite directions. There's been mixed input about the usefulness of this fan. If you do have an opinion, I would love to hear it. I found that every comment on here and the other social media platforms have at least given me a slightly different perspective on some of the problems that RC drone and plane people are trying to solve right now. There's been a lot of people already who have taken two separate EDFs and put them back to back. This design offers the contra rotating motion at a cheaper weight and power cost compared to that version. However, it does introduce an unbalanced torque vector on the new axis and the addition of moving parts that has been proven very hard to implement in practice. I've already made two videos on this, so I'm not gonna go quite in depth into the design process and inspiration of this video. For now, I'm just gonna get into the improvements I've made from the last iteration to this one. I redid the brace connecting the gearbox to the duct, making it longer by about four millimeters. This stages the fan farther away from the gearbox, which increases the amount of air it can pull along with some lightning holes to save on weight and filament. I cut out lightning holes in the motor stator of the duct as well, which cuts down on the obstruction area of the stator. Both of the aerodynamic benefits are pretty simple here. The most important part of this iteration was replacing all of the contact services with nylon. PCBWay has been sponsoring the series and I actually got to use their services myself for this latest iteration. There is no way I was going to try to print nylon on my little Creality printers, and I knew PCBWay has the tooling and the expertise, particularly SLS printers in my case, to get the parts I needed made. I got all my parts approved within a day, and they had it shipped over extremely quickly. I could tell by their packaging, the extra gifts they threw in, and communication throughout the entire process that they really care about their customers. These parts have excellent tolerances and accuracy, so big thanks to PCBWay for helping me out here. I went with PA12 nylon because of its extremely low friction coefficient, high impact resistance, and good moisture absorption properties. Before I was using PLA plus gears that would melt into each other only after a couple runs. I know plenty of people use PLA or even PET G or ABS gears, but for high RPM, small teeth applications like this one, you really need nylon or aluminum. And aluminum is a whole different ballpark in terms of weight, machining, and maintenance. I ended up using some of the old PTFE bike lube I had. I'm not sure how well it helped, but I probably need something dry here like graphite. But I figured it couldn't hurt. So with these new parts, I also had my tolerances pretty dialed in for this project, which obviously with the whole inline axle and gear thing, it had to be really tight. I was able to pretty much assemble this thing like a kit. If you want more of an explanation of the conception of this gearbox and ducts, my previous videos go more in depth. I used a 3D pen to permanently fix everything down. The welds on this are actually pretty clean. I printed out these seven bladed fans, which I didn't expect to perform well at all. Fortunately, I did have a very small fan duct gap, which was actually comparable to the OEM EDF. On my highest performing EDF, I spent a lot of time getting the fan I wanted from the FDM printers, but for this iteration, I didn't have the time to put in as much effort. The process for the old fans were oversizing it and then running it inside the duct uh, to achieve a really small duct fan gap that was like tenths of a mil. The fan duct gap on this iteration is about a millimeter, which is pretty good for me. In general, FDM is clearly not the way to go for printing fans and propellers. This should be pretty obvious, but I try to do it anyway. So to finally get some thrust numbers out of this, I'm resurrecting my handy thrust lever. It's fully 3D printed besides the ball bearings. I had to print a couple of extra replacement parts since this thing had moved around a lot. It's a simple design that uses equally spaced arms and a kitchen spade to hopefully get some accurate thrust numbers. The clip of me almost destroying my entire computer setup was a result of me forgetting to bolt my EDF into the arm. Basically, I wanted to test the maximum thrust of the EDF and then compare it to the number that the manufacturer gives, which is 1250 grams. This is a really, really dumb idea, and obviously I'm too scared to know how accurate the arm really is, but at the very least, it's a good comparison tool. So I printed out an attachment point for the gearbox and super glued and plastic welded it down. For the actual EDF, I designed a two-part brace that basically holds the attachment in place. So this is my testing setup rig. 
uh, we have the main unit without the top um, attached to the lever with these two bolts. Um, the lever, we have the Swiss Army knife um, rubber banded to the end to kind of balance out the weight of the motor. Um, and then just your normal ESC battery receiver setup. And with this, we are good to go and test. And then this is the setup for the actual EDF. It's pretty much the same idea. Despite the new nylon components, there's obviously a huge amount of friction everywhere. You can tell from the sound alone that this gearbox is not happy. I'm getting maximum about 20 grams at this RPM, which is pretty abysmal. You can tell that pushing it probably wouldn't have made a difference. The friction would have only just gotten worse. This OEM EDF is clearly beat up, but it's still performing beautifully in comparison. At the same throttle, it's pushing well over 100 grams of thrust. I think this really just goes to show how well designed these EDFs are and how optimized manufacturers have really gotten the traditional ducted fan to at this point. Obviously a huge disappointment. I don't know how much to blame the fundamental design itself or just the way I'm going about fabricating this. The homemade gearbox clearly has a rough time at the RPMs that the Outrunner motor is demanding. The gears did hold up well though. They didn't melt and so that was a win. Beyond the contra-rotating fan experiment itself, this has been a really fun experience working with gears, nylon, and a more complex mechanism like this inline axle thing. If someone has the manufacturing skill and capability to take this project further, I think it'd be super cool to see that. Again, this design has the aforementioned flight dynamics problems that might not make this project worth developing. It also has a huge flaw with its inability to take everything apart once you put it into place. Because of the power of the motor, I really have to super glue and or plastic weld everything together. I have to do this because I'm printing everything from FDM and using little parts, but this has made the prototyping process extremely frustrating for me. Anyways, thank you for following along in any sort of capacity. Hopefully this can be a resource for someone working maybe on a similar project, but at the very least, I hope this gets a couple more people thinking more about some alternate propulsion approaches.